All right, Kenneth, come on. Another young man that's called to preach and going to be sharing the gospel. And right after him, we'll hear from our, some of our children. Let's stretch our hands out toward Kenneth and pray for him. Father God, we thank you today for Kenneth. And we ask you, Lord, that you would just anoint this young man, God, as he, as he delivers the word of God today, that your hand of grace and anointing would be on him and that you would strengthen him, Father. And, oh, hallelujah, God, we'll be careful to honor you today and to thank you. We ask you for that anointing to be on him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon. There's such an anointing here today. You can just feel the presence of God just resting upon people. We've seen healing in here. We've worshiped in here. There's compassion in here. We talked about winning souls in here. And now I want to talk to you guys about compassion for the lost. If you guys have a Bible, I would like you to open up to Romans chapter 9. kind of odd that God had me pick out this verse here. Um, been wrestling around with some verses. Throughout the Old Testament, we know that God is a compassionate God, that he's full of mercy and compassion. Time again, the children of Israel fail God. When they fail God and go into captivity, God once again just shows the compassion and his mercy by delivering out of the captivity that they were in. So compassionate was he that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for all of us. Everyone in this room is an answer to a prayer. Not only of God, but our families. Old people that are watching us grow up throughout life and they say, you know, look at that young whippersnapper. We need to pray for him. Blue hair, pink hair, purple hair. I put my grandmother through all kinds of stuff. But I tell you, she kept on praying for me. And there's nothing like a mother's prayer for her children. Let's read the verses. Verses 1 through 3 of Romans 9. I'm telling the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. For my conscience assures me in the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unseen anguish in my heart. For I could wish I myself were accursed, cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, my fellow countrymen. And that's the reading of God's word. We got Paul here, who is an apostle. Hasn't been able to make it to Romans yet. He wrote the book of Romans, but he's never been to Rome. Wanted to go to Rome. He had a passion to reach to Rome. In all of his letters, you read out, and you see the passion that he had for people. Those that were lost, those that were miserable, those that were filled with joy. And time and time again, when you read the endings of his letters, you see that he had passion for the people to remember them. People that are lost need to sense that you can relate to them. They want you to come down to their level sometimes and just listen to them. Sometimes they want you to just cry with them. And isn't it true that the Lord said that we're going to have to do that from time to time? The Great Commission is just that. We're going out for the lost. Full of grace, full of truth. But here we see Paul conveying the truth in Christ. Because why? Christ is the truth. He said he is the way, the truth, and the life. And then he says he's not lying, showing that the conscience of God and the conscience with him were one, united. We as a people need to be one with the word. We need to be one with God. Not only when we're up here, but when we're home with our families ministering to our children, ministering to our wives, our wives ministering to the husbands. 
So we need to be one with God. And as we are one with God, God will take our heart and make it one with him and break it so that we are ready to be like Paul, saying with anguish and sorrow as he looked out to the people that he knew were his fellow countrymen, the Jews, looking at them and said, I'd rather go to hell for you than to see you go to hell. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, a Baptist preacher, said that we need to have sulfur hands. Why did he say that we have to have sulfur hands? We have to have hands that will reach in and pluck out those that are falling into hell. D.L. Moody said, it doesn't matter how you get a man to the Lord, just as long as you get him there. I sense that's the reason why they call him Crazy Moody. But, you know, these great men of God had a, an anointing, a passion. And you look back in time, and there was men with passion. Martin Luther, he had such a passion for the Lord at what was true that he nailed the 95 Theses on the cross on the Wittenberg door. Then you got John Calvin, who wrote the Institutes of the Christian and without his systematic theology at the time there would have been no truth being conveyed you know and I think about it you know John Calvin wouldn't be happy with Calvinism today you know you you think about Calvinism and you think about the things that are going on with that and it's just not true of the Lord they have lost the sense of the compassion for those that are lost when they think of such things like that. And the contemporaries through time, John Wesley, Jonathan Edwards, Spurgeon, Moody, all these preachers, Reese Howells, and the prayer of the intercessor, all these things that have been done for God, they've been passionate. They didn't do it for themselves. They do it because they know that God is using them to draw them to the people that are lost. They need to hear the gospel. They need to hear the good news. They need to hear that they're not delayed or denied. That God cares about them. How can you look at a woman that's been raped and abused and just tell her, you know what, God wanted you to do that. He wanted you to go through that. Or I don't care what you've gone through. Or you you look at somebody that's gone through the things that they've gone through in prison. And you say, you know what? You've been in prison. I don't want to know you. But it takes somebody to be compassionate to reach us, talk to us, and get to know us so that we can become compassionate later on to spread the news of God that he died on the cross for our sin. There's nothing like the power of the cross. There's nothing like the power of what the word of God says And when you become united with that, the anointing from God, when he falls down upon us, we don't know what to say, but the Spirit of God knows the hearts of all. He knows every one of us in this room more than we know ourselves. And I ask myself, God, help me to be compassionate. Help me to look at another human being like you look at them. And you look in the Word of God and you see Jesus. If you read in Isaiah 53, you see that he was a man that was acquainted with grief. He looked at his people and he said, I didn't create you like that. He looks at somebody that's paralyzed and he says, your sins are forgiven, son. Get up and walk. And I asked myself, what was wrong? with those that knew the word of God at that time, they have so far missed the point that Jesus had to teach them the heart of the truth of the spirit of God. They had no idea. But they were hardened. And I don't want that to be true of us. I want us to continue to pray unto God and read his word and let us be united with him, filled with him, speaking for him, 
If you read out through the New Testament, you see a constant theme in him, through him. And in him, we can do all things. Through him, we can do all things. You know, and we can look at somebody and say, you know what? I may have not been what you've been through, but I got some ears that can listen. Please tell me. And sometimes that's what God wants. And that's all I got to say.